What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Colts Law. I'm Lawrence Owen. With me, as usual, is my guy, Colts Loyalist. And today, we are joined by two very special guests as we break down the 2022 New York Jets. That is Green Bean right there. What's going on, Green Bean? How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing much better now. This is great. I, uh, I'm i happy to be with you guys again. This is now we're getting almost an annual thing going here, uh, and I'm happy to be here. I can't wait to cut it up with you, fellas. Absolutely. And next to him, as you see, is Max Dean. Welcome back. Glad that you were able to come back and join us this time, actually talking about your team that you like to follow. <laughs> uh, and Max. Yeah, I'm glad to be back to you guys. It's been it's been excellent. Um it's kind of becoming an annual thing for us too, although this is the first time that I get to talk about gang green. So I'm looking forward to that, <laughs> you know, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And, and we're glad that we're actually able to get together and talk about the jets with the guys who cover the jets uh, and, and, and enjoy uh, watching them play. This last off season was very interesting for a lot of teams. Now, obviously uh, the jets went through a, a, a lot of, um, different looks from the last season right they got a new quarterback they you know that changed around some stuff uh new coaches stuff of that nature now they're trying to build on that this year right uh so let's take a look at their roster real quick here we go we're going to drop that down and going over the offense i'm curious to know where are some of these guys like we got uh, a first-round pick, Garrett Wilson. Uh, what, what, what do you guys know about this player? Well, it's interesting. You know, I uh, I had a lot of um, thoughts going round and round uh, about what the Jets should do. We had two first-round picks. We 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 sat with the top five at number four and the top ten at number ten. And uh, there was a lot of people, myself included, wondering if there was a wide receiver good enough to take with a top 10 pick. Now, some people like Drake London, there was the Garrett Wilson people and, and, and some others, obviously Traylon Burks had a fan club. And so there was a few guys, when you look at this wide receiver draft class, uh, compared to maybe last year or the year before, was there a Jamar Chase? Was there a Justin Jefferson, a CeeDee Lamb? Uh, those types of guys. And it, it could have been argued that there wasn't. So we didn't really know. <clears throat> excuse me, that we didn't really know if the Jets would do that, would see a wide receiver as worthy of a top 10 pick. We learned afterward, uh, Lawrence, that he was the only wide receiver that they thought would be a top 10 pick, which aligned with my thinking, even though I wasn't on the big uh, got to draft a wide receiver at 10. If they took one, I was hoping it was Garrett Wilson. Now, Garrett Wilson, six foot tall, uh, known as somewhat of a surgical route runner with incredible versatility, athleticism. Uh, they the word that you'll see, uh, you know, written about him, oddly enough, uh, most often is contort. You'll see the word he's able to contort his body. Everybody likes to use that word. And I've never seen that attached to another human being so often as I have with Garrett Wilson. And I imagine that's a pretty good thing. You know, we're talking about a guy in, um, you know, in contested catches or, you know, trying to adjust to to maybe a little bit errant of a pass, someone having to immediately contort their body to make it work. It seems that Garrett Wilson is considered to be among the uh, the best at being able to do that. And I think the Jets, we we took Elijah Moore with the high second round pick last year. I'm a big guy. I always say like, that's a first round pick. When you're in the first two or three second round picks, that's a first. So we took a first round wide receiver in Elijah Moore last year. Now we got a first round wide receiver this year. Uh, I think they're they're trying to make a statement, which is um, the days of our quarterback not having someone to throw to are over, or at least the attempt to make it over has begun, right? To get past it, and I think Garrett Wilson will be a starter. And you guys know the word starter, it could mean so many different things. Will he see significant playing time? Uh, I think so. I think he's going to be in that that top three and 11 personnel. I think you'll see Garrett Wilson out there uh, quite a bit. And quite frankly, I'm, I'm really excited. This is the highest drafted wide receiver by the Jets since 2001, uh, Santana Moss. So um, it's been a while since we've used such a premium asset on this position, and I'm excited. Round two. Um it didn't take long to go back to the well for the offense, this time acquiring a running back in Brees Hall. 
uh max is there anything uh, about Brees hall that, that you like or want to discuss yeah so Brees hall was generally considered the number one runner coming out of this draft and it was something i definitely agreed with i followed the draft very very closely um not just because it's interesting but obviously the jets had a bunch of high picks i mean generally speaking i totally agree with you green Bean, but i i think essentially the top 40 is really more or less the first round because you usually get a few teams who are reaching for whatever position at the back of that and that pushes some legitimate talent down so that really meant that you know if you look at it from that perspective the jets had four uh, first round picks or, or or selections that were worthy of players like that so uh i do a podcast called sunday night jet lag with a buddy of mine anthony which is a new york jets podcast and we did a a uh, a post first round reaction episode and we were talking about all the players that were available after and going into the second round, and I called it. I said, do not be surprised about Brees Hall going to the Jets early in the first round. I, I called it out, and it makes perfect sense. Because the Jets, in the same vein of prioritizing playmakers at the in the top 10 for their quarterback, they are also prioritizing playmakers throughout the draft coming out of the backfield. Michael Carter is an excellent running back, but we've seen that his body physically – it's going to have a hard time holding up to the strain of being a full-time starting running back. He's just a smaller built. He he's shorter, but he doesn't have that that solidity. Like he's not he's not just thick like some other of the smaller running backs are, but he's an excellent player. This allows the Jets to be run heavy. It allows them to split carries between the two backs. And he is the perfect fit for the scheme. He's very patient. He played in an outside zone uh, style scheme at Iowa State. Um, athletically, he's even better than most people thought just looking at him on tape because he's so smooth of an athlete that a lot of people didn't expect him to to run the kind of time sub 4-4 that he did. Uh, so he he's primed for a great year. We know that those running backs often hit the ground running. You guys know with Jonathan Taylor. I mean, he was looking pretty darn good by the end of his rookie year. And it's hard to compare a player to a guy that successful, but that's that's what the Jets are hoping for, something in that vein with the, with the pick of Brees Hall. So, Loyalist, as you look over the offense here for the Jets, is there any name that sticks out that you uh, that you like or, or, or want to see more out of? Yeah, I want to see more out of their second-year quarterback. I'll be honest with you. Zach, I just want to see what he looks like with all these new dynamic toys. You know what I mean? And the thing is, is – we got to see him a little bit last year, but then he went and had got that injury and stuff, so it sort of postponed him a little bit. But I really like what I want to see from him is how does he work and how does he fit in with the Garrett Wilsons and, and stuff this year? Do they start off hot, or is this going to be more of a, a ramping up season for him? And my my thought is I'd like to see uh, Denzel Mims step up into the role that he was drafted for last year. Yeah. Um, that's that's one situation. I don't think he really lived up to the hype that uh, everybody was hoping for, including myself. I thought Mims was one of the better receivers of last year's draft. As you can see, according to this depth chart, he is sat behind Corey Davis. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work out this year, but – uh, I really feel, you know, that Mims needs to step up in that spot. Do either one of you um, – now we're, we're getting ready to end this, the, the talk about the offense. I want just curious if either one of you uh, have a name, uh, whether it was free agency or draft, that uh, we haven't covered that you would like to kind of touch on real quick. Well, you know what I'll do? Um, I just want to make, no, uh, make mention to the – decades long um void in the jets truly addressing the tight end position so i could talk in detail about any one of the guys i'm excited from kenny yaboa who was an undrafted free agent last year i thought he should have been drafted uh he's on the squad all the way to our third round pick this year jeremy ruckert out of ohio state to the two free agent tight ends that we brought on 
uh, Conklin and Uzoma. I am so incredibly excited. I'm a huge tight end fan. I, I, I just believe strongly when the tight end is utilized properly, that an offense goes up a notch. It, it, it reaches a level that, that offenses that ignore the tight end or just use a guy to block uh, kind of a thing. It, it, it has another notch that those offenses don't have. And the Jets, sadly to say, since 1988 have not had a Pro Bowl caliber tight end. Uh, I'm embarrassed saying this stuff, but you know, hey man, you guys, we're friends, and I'll talk about it. <laughs> but, uh, but so I'm really excited about what they did. I happen to be a Kenny Yaboa fan. Now I don't know how many they're going to keep, but it, you know, look, being in a position to lose quality players is a is a desirable position to be in. You don't like the, the losing of the players, but you want to have you know enough solid players that you have to cut guys that could be contributors on another team. Rather Rather than trying to hope that garbage somehow miraculously succeeds, which has been our old MO. Uh, so I'm really excited about the tight end room. Guys, uh, I, I just I, I've been screaming about it for years, and this is the first year I've seen a true uh, effort to fix it. Hey guys, please smash that like button, hit subscribe, if you're not subscribed, and tag that notification bell so that you're notified next time I go live. Don't forget you can also share this video to your favorite social media and Please open up that description of the video. In there, you find a link to my Patreon, which is only five bucks a month. You get all of my content plus Patreon specific content. And of course, my merch shop right here. Max, is there anyone in yeah. there in that offense? For sure. So I'd love to comment on any and everyone that you guys have brought up. I completely agree about the tight end. I mean, Ruckert <laughs> was a guy. I, I liked Ruckert in last year's draft before yeah. he decided to go back to Ohio State. And then he was my tight end one for this year, and I was banging the table to the point of annoying people about how much I wanted him. And at the end, I'll kind of comment on why this was like the best draft experience ever for me as a Jets fan. Um, but just to differentiate a little bit on offense, Lakin Tomlinson is a guy that we have to mention mm -hmm. as a new addition. Um, he is an excellent guard. He has been an Ironman. He has not missed a game in years. And he had his first Pro Bowl last year. I don't think he's an, a truly elite player at the position, but I think he's a very good one. And if you look at who he is taking over for after last year, Greg Van Roten was one of the worst guards in the entire NFL. <laughs> and you could see clearly there were issues here and there. But, I, I mean, nine times out of ten when a play did not work, you could point exactly to him at the right guard position. So bringing in a guy like Lakin Tomlinson, it's not just that he's a good player. It's that the difference between what he was, what was there and what's there now is massive. So I really do expect the offensive line to be better. You know, the Mekhi Becton thing is another question, but, but now that we have Tomlinson at left guard, we move Elijah Vera Tucker over to the right guard. The offensive line is something I expect to be, you know, maybe maybe not top ten, but I do believe it will be a strength of the of the offense this year. Yeah. Excellent, great, well great information on the offense and 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 depth there. Uh, we're speaking of that. We're going to drop down to the defense now. As we know, there was quite a bit of number one picks that was selected this year um, for the Jets. Now we got two of them on the defense. Uh, wow, um, we got. Obviously, the big cornerback selection, Sauce, uh, Green Bean. Let me know a little bit about Sauce. You know, this is a tough one for me because uh, I made it my pulpit. I said the <laughs> Jets. <laughs> you know when you, you know when you put your neck out there and then and, you know it goes the opposite. So uh, I love Sauce Gardner, the player. Love him, um, but. I made it pretty clear that my vision, my thought about the Jets was that they didn't need a cornerback. There was, you know, up top in the top 10 picks, they were going to go for edge uh, with the top five pick uh, without question. So when they said Sauce Gardner, I had, I mean, it, within 30 seconds, I had, you know, 25 DMs like, ah, mid like middle finger. <laughs> uh, yeah. That said, it's, you know, uh, the Jets put out a docu-series recently. Um, which, by the way, uh, I was always jealous of uh, the Colts docu series, like of inside the draft room. I always loved seeing Ballard and and all that in the in the war room. So the Jets have been doing that the last few years, and there was a moment 
when uh, that they showed in the series, the Jets are are waiting to see who the Texans pick at pick number three. Now, the Texans picked, uh, as we may know, is uh, they picked another cornerback, Derek Stingley. And uh, it clearly by Joe Douglas, our GM is very professional. He's very mild. He's he's a, he's a very calculated man. There, there was one brief moment where they said Derek Stingley and he just his chair twirled. He went poo, just like a little twirl. Like, <laughs> Holy yeah. cow, my guy made it. Like, and they took a, the same position, but clearly the Jets were not eyeing uh Derek Stingley. They wanted Sauce Gardner. And it makes me happy, even though I had my own thoughts, right? We sit out here and we deconstruct you know stuff. Sometimes we're right, sometimes we're wrong. But I'm very happy that the Jets got their number one guy. He was the guy that they wanted up top. It wasn't Kayvon Thibodeau. It wasn't Equanu. It wasn't Evan Neal. All these stories that we heard all year, it was Sauce Gardner. And when the Texans did not take him, that was their guy. And so I'm excited that they got him. Now, adding a cornerback like that, just like I said with with the wide receivers and and like Max talked about with Brees Hall, we haven't took a, uh, taken a running back that high uh, since 2001 as well. It was the Santana Moss, La Lamont Jordan. So it's been a long time, yeah. man. The cornerback thing, we've taken a few more swings, but not with the guy uh, of Sauce Gardner's pedigree. And I'm really excited to see somebody coming in here uh, with that much swagger like that. He has not let up a touchdown in, in, his enti- in the entirety of his college uh, career. Bring in that here. I, I think it's time. It's time that we started collecting those individuals. And I think Sauce Gardner fits right in, and I couldn't be more excited to see him play. Awesome. With the uh, other first-round pick, the the Jets ended up grabbing a defensive end, Jermaine Johnson. Max, uh, I don't know much about this guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Inform me a little bit about Jermaine. Oh, happily. So I will comment <laughs> In in the lead up to the draft, I was doing the podcast with Anthony, and he was, I don't know how against it you were or how or if you were saying it wasn't gonna happen, but he was against it. He was he's he declared that it was the worst possible thing that could happen, them taking uh uh oh. a sauce gardener in the top ten. <laughs> I, <disagree>. oh. <laughs> I I had my favorite player, but also I am the kind of person or fan who will say just because he's my favorite doesn't mean he's the only right decision. So yeah. I, I said, look, he's a blue chip player. I think he's amazing, and I will be happy if they get him. That being said, my favorite player, the player that I wanted at number four overall, was Jermaine Johnson. Wow. I banged the table for him. He's my edge two. He was my, my edge two in the draft behind um, uh, Aiden Hutchinson. Mm. And so I was just ecstatic when they traded up for this guy. It was uh, when they took Garrett Wilson at 10, he was my wide receiver one. I really liked Drake London too. I uh, also, they were basically a one, a one B for me, but I was happy that they selected him because I did believe he was an excellent player. I knew we needed that on offense, but when that pick was made, there was a little part of me that was like, Oh man, he was still available and he was my guy. Yeah, me too. Get to around pick 20. I realize he's still there, and I'm like, they got to trade up for this guy. It was right around pick 20, and he was still there. I was like, he is now within reach. He is the, the cost is no longer prohibitive for them to go up and get this guy. Obviously, if you actually if you if you follow the Jets, you know that they were trying to trade up to even pick 15 to get him. Wow. But this guy is one of the most well spoken players in the entire draft. He's so mature. He's a little bit older because he did go to JUCO for a couple of years before he ended up at Georgia for a couple of years and then went to Florida State because, as we know, that was one of the best defenses, if not the best and most talent-ridden defense in all of college football. So to go get a a larger share of the playing time, he went to Florida State, um, immediately broke out, was loved by the team, and uh, he solidified himself as one of the best players in the country. So one of the things that people ask is why was he available at 26? If there's all this great stuff about him, my, my honest opinion is that I believe that it was just that he's a little bit older than some of the other prospects. He only had the one year of elite production, but it is easy to point to the fact that that defense was so loaded. The first overall pick in the draft didn't necessarily even have elite production that was on that defense. 
And the other thing is that teams will just reach a little bit for for positions they need. We saw that run of wide receivers. We saw teams trading up to go get him. Um, and I just believe that that he fell a little bit. That you know teams probably ranked him anywhere from ten to fifteen to twenty maybe on their board. And the Jets just got lucky. So when this pick happened, I was absolutely ecstatic. I think that he is going to make a huge difference on the Jets' defensive line. Let me know what uh, someone else that you like that that they had grabbed, whether it's. Uh, player coach whatever green uh let's go with jordan whitehead uh there was a lot of of hubbub around the jets uh arguing uh with the ravens about marcus williams i like marcus williams a whole bunch but it turned out the jets never actually gave an offer to marcus williams jordan whitehead was their guy i happen to love jordan whitehead i thought when when we signed him i thought he was a slam dunk uh acquisition and i think you know look uh, the safety position we came from, we had Jamal Adams and Marcus May, this ballyhooed tandem. Nothing ever happened with it. Um, I'm just a, I'm, those guys, Marcus May, I like, but Jamal, I was never the biggest Jamal Adams fan. I think he's more uh, flash than he is substance. Uh, it's just in my opinion. That's, I don't see too many game changing plays from him. And I think Jordan Whitehead is a nose to the grindstone, blue collar, lunch pail type that'll knock your friggin' head off. And I like that about him. Um, again, just like when I said, you know, we had Sauce Gardner and some of that swagger. Jordan Whitehead swagger is it of, a, of an entirely different nature. It's that ferocity. It's that it's the ability to add like a just little bit of an attitude to the back end of our defense. And I thought uh, out. Out of nowhere, nobody had the Jets going for Jordan Whitehead. I was delighted when he was the safety that we brought in. Max? I agree. I mean, he is going to be such a difference maker in the run game. One of the biggest issues mm. the Jets had last year was the inability to tackle from the secondary against the run. And I won't go into it because you already commented on him. I'm hyped about that, that signing. But here's a player that I got to mention that isn't a signee this year or a new addition. But he basically is because he missed the entirety of last year, and that's Carl Lawson. We don't know exactly what he's going to look like coming back. He tore his Achilles in training camp last year in a joint practice with the Packers. And it was devastating because anyone who was at one of those training camp practices, all they could talk about was how dominant he was in that wide nine uh, pass rushing scheme from the defensive front. So he is expected to be fully healthy to start the season. We don't know exactly what it will mean, but if he's anywhere close to as impactful as he looked like he was going to be, that is maybe the best defensive player on the Jets this coming season. So there's a lot of variability there, but I can't not mention him. Uh, Loyalist, anything you want to mention? Yeah, I just wanted to touch base because I remember last year <clears throat> when we talked, Green, you were telling us how they're switching from the 3-4 to the 4-3. You know, yeah. and, and bring with the new regime and stuff. And the Colts, we went through that similar thing going from Grigson to Ballard and stuff. And that first year was rough because you couldn't get all the right pieces to fit into that defensive scheme. This year, do you think that this the defense has, has a chance to grow? And a, 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 excuse me, a massive amount just because of now they've got more of the right pieces fitting into that defensive scheme this year versus yeah. last year. Yeah, I absolutely do. I mean, Robert Sala's defense is predicated on, and the word they use all the time, Max will be familiar with, is that the the edge rushers rush with their hair on fire. So it's a very aggressive defense. I'm a big fan of four down linemen getting, you know, being able to uh, elicit the pressure, you know, from those guys. And then your rest, your defense can do other things and cover different areas. I prefer that. Last year, just like you said, a uh, loyalist, not only did we not have the time yet to get as many pieces, but the pieces we brought in all got hurt i mean the three edge guys we brought in like max mentioned uh, carl lawson we also had vinnie curry and then we had ronald blair the 149er guy that came with Salah, gone all of them then the guys that that replaced them bryce huff he was out for a, a few weeks early on it was just we couldn't seem to get uh anything going so they went a little bit overkill this year we we, we, we look we got carl lawson back we went and got uh, jermaine johnson in the draft we got J jacob martin we signed solomon thomas uh you know we just and in addition to quinn and williams uh quinn and williams and jfm and and uh and then we went with our fourth round pick and got a guy named michael clemens another defensive end so i think that we're finally saying we want this portion of our defense, this aspect, we want it to be present. And if somebody goes down, the defense can't, you know, go down the toilet. We got to be able to have somebody come in of high, higher quality. 
And I think that this year we're uh, we're making a very a very large step toward being able to do that. This channel is proudly sponsored by the Backroom Collection. They do beautiful sports canvas art with football, basketball, baseball, and other sports themes. Special orders are accepted and autograph pieces are available. Many Indianapolis Colts signed pieces will be available beginning in November. Just use your discount code CL10 to purchase the pieces you want to spice up your living area. That's CL10. That sounds very Ballard-like with the whole defensive line. <laughs> I'll tell you that much right now. Um, so we're going to break into the um, the schedule now. And as you see, uh, to start the season uh, preseason off, the Jets end up going to the Eagles. And then they host uh, the Falcons, and then they host the Giants. Uh, any of these preseason games, you you look at? Are you guys expecting a a uh, dress rehearsal game and uh, against the Falcons or the Giants? Well, you you, you know what, man, uh, and I, I'm sure Max will feel the same way. All I want out of these damn preseason games is I want to come out of them healthy. That's yeah. it. <laughs> I, don't give shit. I don't care, man. Like if they got to play one snap of the starters and sit them down, then do it. I want to show up to week one with the team that we actually went and built. That's all I want. Week one, the team we built. So if we can do that, the preseason can go any which way uh, this year. I'm, I, I, look, I'm excited to watch it, but that's all I really want. Max? Agreed. I totally agree. The one thing I'll point out is, and I knew you were going to say that because I feel the same way, <laughs> but the one thing I'll say is it, it, as little as it might be, I do want to see how the, the defensive line holds up to that run heavy attack of the Eagles kind of in that first preseason game, just as a little taster, because as we move on to some of the other games, um, there there's a particular style the Jets want to play defensively uh, against the run. And, I believe that it can work against maybe some some average to below average offensive lines, but I'm not sure how it's going to hold up to the really good offensive lines. So maybe that's the one thing that I would point out about the upcoming preseason games. And it's funny you mentioned the the Eagles and their run game because week one that's the that's the Ravens and that's a very similar running style system that yeah. they've got going on there. Uh, that's that that's week one. That's a tough game right off the right out the gate. Uh, and then they they go to Cleveland, which you, we don't even know really. Is it going to be Brissett? We we don't know. Um, and then uh, we got the Cincinnati Bengals coming to town, and then you go to Pittsburgh. That's going to be a fun game too. Yeah. Uh, very aggressive defense coming in at your young offense. Wow. Um, uh, obviously, uh, Dolphins and Jets. That's a that's a long time. Um, rivalry going on there. Uh, Jets going to Green Bay. Stop me if any of these games yeah, or well, something. Well, let me just say this. Lawrence, do you see what they're trying to do to us here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, dude, does nobody remember we won four games last year? Can we have maybe somewhere in the first eight games, can we have a Jaguars, a Bears, a Lions, somebody that could be considered our peer? No. They give us the entire AFC North, wrap that up with the Packers. Like, you know, like – I don't know, man. It seems to me like the NFL is uh, is trying real hard to keep us in the in the basement, uh, and which is going to be fun because we're not going to stay there. We can do that uh, to whatever degree you want, but I feel pretty confident. But I, I will say, anybody looking at this just from an objective standpoint, you cannot ignore that the NFL did us no favors this first half of the season. Well, yeah, I mean. Know. The schedule was set years prior, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, and then <laughs> it is, I mean, when it comes to division wise, you knew you were facing the AFC uh, North this year, no matter what. Right. Right. Well, we uh, know who, we know who we're going up against uh, the order in which it's set. That's, that is uh, definitely not prepared in advance, but and right. it's like every Jets fan you ask will say, the only thing I really want is to not be out of the playoffs by October. And the NFL said, oh, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, I, I want to be honest. It, it's fun, fun to joke about and whatnot. I think the Jets have really done a great job of setting themselves up to be competitive with most of the teams that they do go up against. I mean, I believe there's no way Deshaun Watson is playing week two. That changes the dynamic of the Browns. Um, I, I, any team that has an elite quarterback is always going to be a real tough out, but 
I think that if the Jets are, are at where their potential is, then they can go toe-to-toe with just about any team. I do think the one team, the one matchup that is absolutely brutal is to go in to uh, or to play at home versus Baltimore in that week one game because mm-hmm. the Jets' defensive front is really built as to, to, to simulate as if it's a pass rush, but even on rundowns. So you're going hair on fire even on rundowns all across the line after the quarterback and you're hitting the running back on the way there. And if you don't, you're at least essentially trying to dictate which gaps the running back goes through. And then your linebacker safeties come in and make the play. Now, additions like Jordan Whitehead go a long way towards that. But with an additional running option like Lamar Jackson, that just throws a total wrench into the to the whole situation. And it's like, with that being one of the biggest questions on defense last year, the run defense, I'm a little nervous about how that's going to look week one. And it might be like a, a real tough out to get absolutely crushed by the run game, the thing you were supposed to fix in week one and, and, and be 0 and one as a result of that. But otherwise, I mean, to me, obviously you just look at any good team and it's going to be the most challenging game, bills, Packers, you know, Bengals, whoever, but that's the one where I'm, I'm kind of gritting my teeth a little bit. Going well, the good news Denver, is Denver, going well, the, Denver, the, that's tough. I'm just going to, I'm sorry, Lawrence, but the good news is at least it is opening day. And if there's a day that jets fans are rabid, it's a home game, week one. We'll all be there. We're having huge, you know, get togethers, Jets fans out there. If you're looking to hang with a bunch of people, just go to Jet Lounge, go to my page. You'll see we're, we're having, you know, large get togethers, but we're going to at least be putting as much energy into that game as we can. I mean, week one, that's when you get the best of Jets fans. Week four, different story. You're a little bit more tired. <laughs> Maybe, but uh, week one, at least we're going to be there uh, supporting the team because it is it, it's a brutal way to start the season. But if we come out quick and just pop them in the chops a little harder than they were expecting the lowly Jets to do, maybe you can get them. And it is September 11th as well. So right. the energy will be pretty special, no doubt. Yes, but, yes, definitely. I didn't even realize that. Yep. Um, then the Jets go to Green Bay again. Uh, Jets then go to Denver, which is always <laughs> tough and mile high. Uh, then they host the Patriots. Then they host the Bills. My goodness. Then they go to the <laughs> Patriots. Yeah. For and me. look, you have a, 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 a reprieve finally yeah. <laughs> in late November. <laughs> there you go. For me, that three game stretch, that three game stretch to the, the Patriots and then. The Bills, I mean, I'm sorry, you know, I feel like the Bills are one of the best teams in the AFC, but still, if you can if you can play well against them, you know what I mean, and make them earn that win, you know, I, but, but those two Patriots games, especially getting the, you know, the Bill Belichick Patriots at home first and then having that bye week before you go in, on the road to sit there and meet up with, with them again, I think that, that little stretch right there is going to be, a good uh, barometer for what type of season the Jets have had, you know, how do they fare? Do they split? Do they take both games from new England? You know, those are some of the things I look at. And really for me, I'm not looking at the Jets and to say they're, they're playoff bound this year, but I am looking at looking for certain games and the the way they respond in those situations. And this three game stretch is really huge. I think. And then you got, then they go to the Vikings and then they go back to the bills then they get a nice little reprieve with the Lions, the Jaguars, and the Jets, and then finish off with Miami. Last four games, if, if the first four games was as easy as the last four, uh, <laughs> that would be uh, more interesting because uh, then you'd be like, well, look, you know, we, we legitimately have a shot at being 4-0. You know, yeah, yeah, to yeah. <laughs> but, but, hey, you know what? Here's a chance, no matter how ugly the season starts, People talk about finishing strong, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And this is an opportunity for the Jets to finish the 2022 season off very strong if they can just finish those last four four games. That's where I'm looking at. I want to see them walk out of this last four game stretch uh, with a winning record of the last four games. If you can, you can pull that off. That at least tells me this is a young team that is developing into something for the future. 
Yeah. Well, and that's well said. I mean, look, you know, we talk about winning games in December and it's interesting the way the NFL season evolves each year. It's like there are teams that come out for, you know, five and one. Mm -hmm. And if they if, you know, they can start really great. But if it doesn't continue, the back half of the season can knock them right out of contention. And interestingly enough, teams that had slower starts, if you just scrape together a few wins in there, if you can end the season on a really strong note, which the schedule does at least at this this point afford the opportunity to do uh who knows if we get four or five wins in there and then wrap it up like this and you know end it hot with uh you know winning three or four of these then we have you know what would be a 500-esque season which is really all i'm looking for i mean look i'm a jets fan i want to win i'd love to go to the playoffs but truth be told, I'm looking for a um, – and Max said it really perfectly before. We're set up to compete. That's what I want to do. I'm tired of being a team that – that or a fan that experiences 45-3. to three. I'm done. I don't want it. I'm sick of watching that crap. I want to be competitive. If we lose some games, you know, by a touchdown in the last four minutes because we're just too young, we don't know how to close it out, I'm totally fine watching that stuff. I would love to get an eight-win season out of this. And the, the four games at the end do allow us to potentially finish strong, get to that, that, that mark I'm hoping to see, which would be a real nice way to go into the offseason, uh, stacking on top of uh, the competitive team that we built this year. So that would be good. So floor ceiling. I'm looking at the, at the Jets team. They've got a lot of talent on this team, but it's young and it still has yet to, to mesh and, and, and learn the NFL properly. Uh, I, I love their coach. They just happen to be in a situation where the Patriots are the Patriots with Bill Belichick. You got an up and coming team in the Miami Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills, in my opinion, are the best team in the AFC. Uh, so that, that makes it very difficult. And as Green Bean and Max was talking about their schedule starting off the year is absolutely brutal. Um, I'm looking at a floor of six wins. Okay. I really do believe that your floor is six wins. You've got enough games in there that I feel like you should win. Um, I feel like if you get a team, this team clicks. If this team can click because of all the talent that's on it, if Wilson can actually uh, step up and become that player that that we you were hoping for, the Jets fans were hoping for last year, uh, and, and some of these rookies maybe make that jump mid to late season, like – you know, you, you're hoping the the higher picks do. I could see nine, ten wins out of the Jets. I, I I'm thinking a floor of six and a ceiling of ten. Uh, Chuck, loyal. Yeah, for me, I, I I look at like you said, they won four games last year. So the bright side is their floor. I think is higher than that four mm -hmm. games from last year. I think that you know, like like you said, in the five or six range is their floor. But I, I'm more of the eight or nine for their ceiling because. That, that Ravens game and the things that we've already discussed, there are some, some uh, circumstances that's going to be tough to overcome. But yeah, like I said, when you're looking at a team that's in a rebuild and, and, and now, now you're starting to acquire some of those pillar pieces that you can build this organization around. Like I said, I like the fact that their floor is now higher than where they ended off last year and the ceiling, I would say somewhere in the eight or nine winners. Green Bean? Yeah, you know, I'm with you, Lawrence. I think six is really what I'm looking at for the floor. I mean, uh, if we stay healthy, that's 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 the thing. The Jets' the last three years are among the top three in IR uh, every year. So it's if we got it, if we can end that and have a six win floor, I think 10 is really our ceiling. Um, you know, and I think again, it's more about being competitive, right? Like we, you know, the, like the game with you guys, we can't have rushing, you know, our defense giving up 300 yards on the ground anymore. <laughs> that stuff needs, we need to start plugging those, those little holes. And if we can, and we, and we just become a team, that's not a laughing stock, which is what we've been for much of the last decade. I think six uh, to 10 wins is, is realistic. And, uh, you know, who knows how a season can go, right? We, anything can happen, but I think six is a safe floor and 10 is a safe ceiling for me. Max. Yeah, honestly, Lawrence, I don't think you could have said it better. Uh, and green being six to 10. That's, that's really what I believe. I think the, the overall talent of the roster is too good to, to lose much more than six games. Um, and, the youth of it is really what limits it from being any better. And just the questions at quarterback, because it is one of the better rosters in the NFL. If you take age out of it, 
if you look purely at talent, like it's it's right up there. So um, it's I don't I think the Jets will be good for one or two blowouts, just like every other team. I mean, even the Packers have them here and there. Everyone gets spanked at some point, but I don't I do not expect that to be a recurring theme with this roster. So six and ten is what I've got for as well. Well. Thank you so much for joining. I appreciate shout out to Green Bean and to Max, both of you guys, for coming on and joining and giving us your insights to the New York Jets. We appreciate it very, very much. Make sure you check out uh, Green Bean's channel, and you can follow uh, Max and Green Bean in the links in the bottom of the description of the video. And until next time, I'm Lawrence Owen. That's Colts Loyalist. Again, with Green Bean and Max Dean, we just covered the Jets for the 2022 season, and as usual, have a good one. Just because a guy's a player's not a household name doesn't mean we can't make him a household name.